Okay, so now we have our room, we have our walls, we have our main character moving, we have him stopping through walls. We're going to now move on to uh, adding enemies to the game. And the enemies are going to move automatically compared to our player who we control. And ultimately we'll make it that when we, uh, that when we collide with one of the enemies, we'll go back to start and have to at least start the level again. Uh, at another time we'll work on a lives system so that we, you know, as we lose three lives, the game will end and we'll be uh, put in the position to start over. But for this uh, part of the series, we're just going to worry about if we collide with the enemy, we'll go back to start and uh, and keep going. Uh, so anyway, so I'm going to add, uh, I'm going to actually add two different enemies, um, or better yet, I'm just going to add one, you're going to add the other one later, and I'm going to call them guards. Uh, we're in a prison situation, so we're going to have a couple of guards, and here's guard one, he's kind of scary looking, um, and uh, we're going to add an object for him, and that's going to be obj guard uh, guard one and actually I'm sorry I'm gonna make this one called obj guard h for horizontal and we're gonna use that sprite and here I'll call him sprite guard h for horizontal in other words we're gonna have one guard that moves left and right horizontally and one that goes up and down uh, the one and then when they hit a wall, they'll they'll reverse their direction. So I'm going to program my guard now. And this brings us back to our now hopefully familiar area of where we add events and actions. And I am going to add an event that when the guard is created, in other words, when he first shows up, you know, in any room, he's going to move um, in either... He's going to start by either moving left or right. That's what this means here. So he can either move one of those directions, not, not both. And I'm going to have him move just ever so slightly slower than us at a speed of 4. Okay? So right now he's set to move. We kind of can take for granted already that he's going to go right through a wall at this point. So for our guard, we need, and this should be a review, when he collides with a wall, something should happen. Now, there are these two options under move. This one is reverse horizontal direction. This one's reverse vertical direction. So he's going horizontal, so he's going to reverse horizontal direction. And let's uh, put a few of these in the room and give that a shot. So I'm going to have some of these guards. I'm going to put one, hmm, how about we put one here? Put for now, we'll just put a couple in here. Uh, we'll put one down here. We'll put one here. And we certainly can add more as we see fit later. Um, I'll put one right here, and we'll see what happens right now. So there they go, and they're doing just as we said. They're looking rather ominous. And as you note right now, nothing happens if we collide, so we need to fix that. Okay? So that's going to be our next thing for this video. And then, again, I'm going to just have you take it from there and create that and the vertical one who, different from the horizontal, will move up and down in reverse vertical direction. So when Bilbo, again, since it's our character, I kind of want to focus on him for being the one to collide with the guard. When he collides with guard horizontal, he is going to, and this is a different kind of move command, this one here is going to have him uh, jump to position. Oops, that's not what we want. Get rid of that. We want him to jump to start. Okay, jump to start. Now, this is interesting and brings up another point. So I'm programming object Bilbo. It asks me who I want this to apply to, self, other, or object. Well, I do want Bilbo to jump to start, so that is self. Um, just so you understand, other would be the one he's interacting with, an object would be any, so if I did object guard for object, every guard would move back. That's not usually what I want. In this case, I'm going to want self. And to take it a step further, um, I believe, and you know, depending on your game, it might be different. I believe the enemy should also move back to start because sometimes you get in a weird position where he's 
right where you are, and then he just keeps killing you. So if you both move to start, it's kind of like restarting the room, which we could have done also. So I'm going to also do jump to start, and it'll be other. Now, with what I just said, too, about the fact that it could have been jump, you know, a restart room, there are so many different ways to do everything we're going to do in Game Maker. And as you move on, um, you're going to hopefully expand your ideas and not do things just the way they're being taught to you in these tutorials, but you'll start to realize there are other ways to do things and that you're not reliant on this. So we're going to give this a shot, and that would be the end of this uh, lesson, if it works. So I'm moving around, and I hit an enemy. We both, I think we both went back to start, and we did, okay? So this part is working pretty well, and there we go. So now, in the next lesson, uh, we'll go into the idea of what happens when we at least make it to the exit and go to the next room. So at that point, you'll be able to make uh, a game with multiple levels, and then we'll advance to other things later, like shooting and such. So uh, good luck with getting both your horizontal and vertical enemies uh, or guards in there, and I'll see you next time.